Welcome back to Goodness and Gracious. I'm Chrissy. I'm Renee. <laughs> We're so boring, aren't we? That's all right. Um, so we've been in this series, uh, Your Faith Affects Your Family, for a while now. You guys probably think you need to be landing this plane, uh, but there's still some to go. Uh, we started out with, um, who are you? And that was determining um, if you are in Christ and uh, what the difference is between that and not being in Christ. Um, the last time we started with, what are you doing? So we started with, who are you? Who are you? And now we're doing, what are you doing? Um, last time we laid out clearly um, that God does not save you for you to stay idle. Um, he has a plan for your life, your new life. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that we are a new creature. The old has passed away and behold, all things are become new. I don't know if people don't understand that. I, I'm, listen. They, like you said, they, they just want to stay idle. Yes. Yeah. And I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. That's all that matters. Yeah. You just want to stay that way. And Gary has talked about that this morning. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't quite understand how they can. Yeah. Maybe it's not in their Bible. They ripped it out. <laughs> Could have been. There's, I don't like that part, so I'm going to scratch you know, it out. The, the submission part? Yeah, that's not in my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It's in there. <laughs> it's in there. Yeah. We're just kidding. And you know, I think, Renee, too, is that people, uh, we don't sit here as if we've attained to you right. know this. We, we're we still learning, too. Mm -hmm. And um, we, uh, the the... The messages that we bring you, um, that we feel God has laid on our heart, um, those we have to learn them ourselves first. And, and even after we're learning them ourselves, we still haven't attained. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, we, we have to learn this. And so do you, um, we're, we're all in this together. So that microphone is in the, oh, Yeep. how's that? <laughs> Perfect <laughs> for slyness. <laughs> well, when I had adjust mine while I go, you're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> what are you doing? <gasps> okay, back to the subject. Right. Sorry. Oh, yeah, we needed it. You created a diversion. Um, yeah. um, so we're new creatures. This means that once you are saved, you are a totally different person than you were before. I think that's hard for some people to, mm. to grasp. Um, yes. We still have this flesh to contend with, but our hearts become tender to God and what he desires for us. Um, we talked about how we must move past the honeymoon phase uh, of being saved to be able to grow closer in our relationship with him. Um, it's very hard to build a solid relationship with your spouse if you remain in that honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's fun. But real life does await, uh, and that requires growth and stability. Um, it's the same with our relationship with God. So Hebrews 6, 1 and 9, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you in things that accompany salvation. And we talked about that the last time. It's one of my favorite verses. Um, he has a plan that involves better things that accompany Salvation uh, to many people, uh, too many people are comfortable staying in the honeymoon phase. And if I can be so bold mm -hmm. as to say, if you are comfortable there, you may not have accepted Christ as he has intended you to accept him. Um, the old saying is the proof is in the pudding. We talk about they that all the time. They want to hurt because, mm. you know, progression Yes. It's, it's not a smooth ride. No. <laughs> You're going to get hurt. It's, You're going to get bruises and, yeah. you know. There's a lot of cutting away. Up, yep. Chiseling. Of, yep. Yes. Yep. A lot of cutting away. And it's very, very easy to tell if someone is interested in the better things that accompany salvation. The longer you, you know, the more time you spend with them. And that is not to say that any of us is sinless. Um, that's not even a possibility. But sometimes you just know what you know, what you know. And we are all guilty of walking around not re representing Christ as he really is. All of us are guilty mm -hmm. of that. But, and I just talked to um, the Sunday school, the young Sunday school classes uh, about this. To whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in Luke twelve forty eight. And you can take that wrong or you can take it as it is. Uh, many have mistakenly thought that 
what is required is something that is contrary to salvation by grace alone. It's not yeah. contrary to um, salvation by grace alone. You want to read James 2 again? <laughs> James 2, 18 says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you, no, and I will show the, <laughs> the my, sorry. <laughs> I thought it was me at first. <laughs> okay, let's start over. I will show you my faith <laughs> by my work. Yay, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. <laughs> show me thy faith without thy works and I will show my <laughs> I will show my faith <laughs> by my works. You got me all messed up. <laughs> I am not so that we're reading bad. off or I anything. Am so I think we should have read out of the Bible. I know, I'm so bad at that. <laughs> Um, I might have fast know. fingers. It's okay. Um, so Hopefully somebody got a kick out of put, that. <laughs> yeah, right. Simply put. Yeah, simply. True faith, true salvation will have something to show for it. Um, true joy. <laughs> true, true toys, yes. So I was listening to a message this week. Um, I listened to a particular guy and I just uh, mm, steps all over my toes. Um, but... He was talking about, and this kind of goes along with that, how we believe that you have to believe for salvation. And you do. You have to admit, believe, confess. You have to believe. But we like to think that, and that's for salvation. Sanctification is that growth process where we like to think that now that we've believed unto salvation, that we have to do the work for the sanctification. It still takes belief. Your mm -hmm. belief is what sanctifies you because what you believe of him causes you to change how you live. Um, we just, I think that we get that so mixed up. We think it's about us and it's not. It's still about yeah. your belief. So not what you think should be a sure sign, but what God says is a sure sign. So what, what you think is going on, what you think is right is, is not a sure sign. But what God says is a sure, sure sign. So when that's talking about what you have to show for it. So I can say, well, I'm a good Christian because, because of this. Well, does God say right. that that's what makes you a good Christian? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not up to you. It's Your up to him. don't matter. Not a bit. I've seen that a couple of times on Facebook this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. My opinion doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm really glad about that. Yep. So the Bible says that you will know people by their fruits, and that's what they produce. Um, this is not something that you can fake. Mm -hmm. um, and it, so somebody comes in, you may not you may not know them right away, but the more time you spend with them, right, who they are is going to be it's mm -hmm. going to produce. Okay, um, and this is you know like okay, so an apple tree cannot disguise itself as a peach tree. Oh, I can't do it. I mean, an apple farmer, whatever you call those, um, <laughs> may be able to say to someone, this is not well-versed, you know, in trees. That is an apple tree. Don't ask me what I just said, because I really don't know. <laughs> Please excuse me. Please excuse me. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere I'm with that. I'm going somewhere. Okay. So let's go backwards. And I got to compose myself. I know. Are you serious? Compose it. Compose it. Get it together. Okay. <clears throat> we'll hold it, but okay. So a f an apple farmer. Okay. He can say, this is a peach tree. Now, even, but even the most ignorant in trees, like I'm not well-versed in trees. Okay. So I don't know. If you put a tree right here and a tree right here, I'm not going to be able to tell you what kind of tree Unless it it's got fruit on it. Right. <gasps> That's where I'm going with that. Oh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, uh, the, the apple farmer may say, hey, Renee, this is a peach tree. Liar. And you're like, okay, I believe you. As it starts to produce fruit, you're like, um, I ain't no expert. Yeah. In trees. 
green green things. Um, and I'm going to tell you, this is not a peach tree. It's an apple tree. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Carly Grace can figure that out. <laughs> Not the way you guys did. I, know, I, did really bad. I did a really bad day and I so hopefully that didn't confuse you guys too much. Yeah. But I understood. I okay, they'll get good. it. They'll get they'll have to maybe replay it a couple times to get it, but yeah. they'll get it. So now the apple tree guy can continue to say, like I said, that the tree is a peach tree. Even after the evidence shows that it's clearly not a peach tree. But the proof is in the pudding mm -hmm. or the apples. In the tree. Yeah. Or the apples, so to say. So I feel like we encounter more of these types of people than we realize. Mm. Um, I'm not saying that we can't encounter some people that are like this, that are actually saved. I'm just saying, why would you want to make someone question if you're exactly. actually saved? Exactly. I don't know. Ooh, that's some big It's yours. <laughs> well, <laughs> so for example... I'm not sure I've brought this up before, but how I used to be with my temper, getting upset with people, holding grudges, yeah. so on, um, it affected my family in a negative way because my son started acting like me. Yeah. And it was totally ugly on him. I hate it when our kids start acting like <laughs> us. I know, right? <laughs> so what would have happened if I had stayed on that path? Yeah. I don't even want to think about that. And thankfully, I don't have to because he turned me around and put me in the right path yeah. and my son also. Right. So no one is so questioning your salvation in that. I do not question right, your salvation right. in that. Um, but you came to the realization that by the grace of God, that you needed to change. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all need to do this and we do need to do it on a daily basis. Some of the things that God asked us to change are bigger than others. Right. Okay. So that was probably one of your mm -hmm. bigger ones. So with this series and this particular episode, this is what this is for. And I'm begging you and myself. I'm not just begging you. I'm not and I'm not just begging you. I'm begging myself to get serious with God. So our families are depending on it. Mm -hmm. And just like in that example that you just gave. Can we talk about the parents who say they are saved? Mm -hmm. mm. But don't act like it. Oh, she's going to go there. <laughs> well, the world is more important. <laughs> yeah. And they don't listen to the preaching, not faithful to church. Yeah. What happens to their kids? Right. We have seen this over and over and over almost 100% of the time. Those kids are not in church. Right. Today. And that's the sad part. Most of the time if the family members aren't what they're supposed to be. It affects the children and not in a good way. Yep. And I went there. Yes, you did. And I'm glad you did. Guess what I'm going to add to it. All right. I'm just going to put a little spice on it. All right. It. Perfect. Okay. So we see this all the time and we see this in our very own church. And to be honest with you, I am truly worried. Like, I really, really am. Um, I used to be, you know, G Gary talked a little bit about this this morning, but um, I used to think as I was growing in Christ and as I was, um, the sanctification process was in its, you know, in its prime or, you know, well, it still should be in its prime. But um, I got to think, well, this is clearly what the Bible says. Why isn't this person over here doing this? And I, I used to be like that. That's in, not to say that I've attained. I have not. But that's not the way I'm looking at it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm really, 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 truly worried about the condition of some of the people within our church, within our churches and with our, within our church. Um, this world is getting worse by the day. Mm -hmm. Like, and I believe that he could be getting real close to wrapping this thing up. Um, and I realize that people have been saying this for over 2000 years, but just because you feel that something or someone has um, talked something to death doesn't mean right. it doesn't change that he is coming back and he gave us some signs. So I have a question and this is a real question that I need you and you and you and me to ask ourselves. And I ask that you please be real with yourself because that is the only way that you begin to see what he has for you. Um, if you heard, now I think about this. If you heard the news that Jesus was coming back today, would this change how you live this last day before he came? Now, we have probably said this tons of times, but I want you to really think about it and be honest with yourself 
it doesn't matter what I think, you know how you are living. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you think. Mm -hmm. I know how I am living. So Titus 2, 11 and through 12 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Hmm. So if you would need to make some changes to how you live, if the news came um, in that Jesus was coming back today, you are not living soberly righteously or godly. And what kind of impact is that having on your family, Mm -hmm. your friends, Christians? What kind of impact is that? Are you, ask your, I I need you to ask you, I need you to ask yourself this. Are you faithful to church service attendance? Mm. Are you faithful to Sunday school? And this is a red flag to me. Um, and most people that come to even all three services, you can come to all three services and skip Sunday school. And I'm kind of looking at the situation like, how does that compute? Mm-hmm. Because God has a plan for you. And if you miss that Sunday school portion of that plan, you're missing out greatly. So are you faithful to participate in the ministries of your local church? I'm not saying that you say or you sign up and then you show up here and there. I'm saying, are you faithful to those? Um, Are you faithful to prayer and not just your personal prayer? Are you faithful to praying for your church, its ministries and the all over mission that God has for it? Are you faithful to encourage your children in participation? Um, I left out attending church because that should be a given. Okay, Um, there are so many possibilities in churches for youth programs, including our own. If parents would set an example of participation, the proof would be in the pudding. So let me just ask another hard question that I feel (laughs) that God has been dealing with me on. Okay, so if he's going to deal with me, then I'm going to tell you about it. (laughs) Um, We have already said that it is um, going to get bad. Okay, the Bible says it and the news is backing that up day by day. Mm -hmm. But if you lost your freedom, freedom to go to church, freedom to worship God, how he calls you to, would your family, your kids have enough to endure to the end? Would they have enough? I often think about this. If what what the Bible says um, happens in my lifetime or even after I'm gone. And I'm talking, um, I have to be honest with you, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. I was doing my own Bible reading regimen. I got off of the com- the uh, comprehension. comprehension. Yeah, yeah, I got off of that. But I decided I need a little bit more stability in my you know, direction for reading. So I got back on that comprehension train, and I was reading what he said was supposed to be for this week, last week. Okay. Okay. So, and I was like, well, and there's a reason for that because this kind of goes along with what I, you know, what Mm -hmm. I feel that God would have us to um, say and for them, for everyone to hear. So I'm talking uh, famines, wars, and rumors of wars, being afflicted and hated and even killed for Jesus's namesake. Have I lived a life That is an acceptable example of how to endure these things. And Matthew 24 talks about all these things. And it also talks about the ones that endure to the end shall be saved. So have I, have you, are we living examples that will have had an impact on our family or kids that shows them that enduring is our only option or rather have the examples that we have set for them actually set them up to fail. If Jesus isn't important enough to you based on the examples that you have set your track record, I guarantee you Jesus will prove to not be important enough to your kids to sustain them. He just won't. You have to read later on. 
So the question I have, since you have questions, I'm okay. allowed to have them, right? Yep, sure are. <laughs> are we re are somewhat responsible for trying to get the parent or parents to see what's happening by not taking their kids to church and showing them the importance of church and having a personal relationship with Jesus? Yes. The answer is yes. Could we not try to help them see what's happening in a biblical, godly way? Yeah, I hope so. I honestly don't know the answer to that question because most of the time the parent or parents aren't going to listen to this advice. Yeah. I mean, I understand we're supposed to do that. Yeah. Whether we do it nicely or not, use the Bible to show them or whatever, they are going to live their lives the way they want to. Yep. And try to squeeze Jesus in church in when it's convenient yeah. for them and their family. So what are their priorities? I just want to shake those people sometimes and say, wake up. You <laughs> yeah. are destroying your kids. I've yes. seen too many of this yeah. families happen. Their faith isn't on Jesus. It's in the world. And that is very sad to me. Who is missing out? All of them. Every single one of them. All so, of them. and that's kind of where I wanted to, you know, I, I feel like say these things over and over and over again, but the Bible is living. Mm -hmm. Like his word is living. So, even if we feel like sometimes we're being a dead horse on some things that we talk about, someone hasn't heard it. Someone that's listening yeah. hasn't heard it. There's something about what we're going over that I haven't learned. It's time for me to learn it. So even though I think that I've learned, my belief in him and how that's grown wants to sanctify me just a little bit more. So I, I feel like we're saying these things over and over and over again, but this honestly and truly is mm -hmm. near and dear to my heart because I think about, I think about Lucas and I think about uh, CJ and Rachel and I think about um, Jamie and Jacob and all the grand, like, okay, let's just say, Kason, have I set the example for him? That even if I'm here or if I'm gone, when all of these things start to come to pass, have I set the example for him that Jesus is enough and enduring is the only option? Mm -hmm. Has he learned enough for me to do that? Mm -hmm. And I feel, I feel responsible for that, for not only Kason and Callan, Kari, Juliet, Tolkien, and all the kids, I, I feel it for it's my motivation for Sunday's teaching Sunday school. It's my motivation for teaching life wise. I feel responsible. I need to do my part because ultimately it's all about him. Mm -hmm. And if we set the example for anything different than that, we're right. setting them up to fail. Mm -hmm. So I was reading in, this is what I wanted to read. So I got a little mixed up in my strategic comprehension. So I was reading ahead of the game and this doesn't pertain to, um, parents and family and things like that. But it's talking about the Pharisees, um, the scribes and the Pharisees. But this is what we do. If we set our kids up to fail, this is what we're doing. So it says in verse 13, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now this is the part that's for, we should as parents and just people in general should be scared about. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So we as parents, we as humans in general, the examples that we set, we're not willing to take the step and go in ourselves. And not only are we doing that, we're preventing everyone else from coming mm -hmm. in. I, I read that and I was like, that's exactly what what happens that's right. exactly what people do and it it really burdens me it really really does and i i hope that we get a little bit off key and we get a little bit jokey and we get a little bit <clears throat> sometimes <laughs> just a little <laughs> but i pray that you get you guys can see our hearts um and wanting to be um examples for mm -hmm. the women um, in our lives, and even if they're not in our lives, we want to be an example to everyone. We want people to see Jesus in us. Yes. And never, it's never condemning. It's always, this is the better way, mm -hmm. you know, and we are learning right along with you. And we hope that you understand our heart and that we take this very, very serious. What's my famous saying? It matters how you live. Yes. Whether you like it or not, people are watching. Yeah, <laughs> they are. 
Most of all, the Lord's watching. Yes. And, you know, like Jacob was talking this morning um, about his sister um, and finding um, Mm -hmm. a good godly person. Um, And I feel that Lucas has done that as well. He has found him a good godly um, person that he can um, share what God has in store for them um, together for the rest of their lives. How do they learn how to do that? How do they learn how to search for that person that's going to be what God wants for them? That's the the examples Mm -hmm. that we set, you know, the things that we do. And it's hard work. Like it is really, really hard Mm -hmm. work. So like I could, I could say, well, I can skimp on this today. And God knows my heart. God knows what, how I love him. And I could skimp on this, but me skimping on that, what is that going to do to the person that's watching me? Because everyone's watching. Yeah. And what kind of Christian is that going to produce of them? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they're going to think, well, I don't have to do this. So now no longer is this something that's being skimped on. It's just not being done. And then the person that they have an example on or that they are an example to learns that, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's just a domino effect. Well, I think, well, I think about, you know, just like the the testimony or whatever with my temper. Mm -hmm. If I had stayed on that track and Josh would have stayed on that track. I don't think he'd be in church today. Right. It's hard telling where he'd be. And what does that mean for Juliet? Exactly. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Would there be a Juliet? There you know what I'm saying? Be. And that's and that's what yeah. I that's what I I it it so scares me to think about because I believe that I really believe that God's getting ready to wrap this thing up. Um I still think we got a lot of hard stuff to go through. But I do not want to be this person mm-hmm. that's shutting up the kingdom. I'm neither going in nor letting anybody else right. by. I don't want to be that person. Mm-hmm. And um, I hope that you want to, you don't want to be that person either. Right. <laughs> you, whoever you are listening. <laughs> do you know so, where you're going next time? I sure do. All right. If I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's still a mystery. <laughs> um, we're still in your faith affects your family. So we talked about who are you? The way you talked about, what are you doing? Now we're going to talk about where you're going. That's not, I'm not talking about heaven. I'm mm-hmm. talking about where are you going in, a, in the path that's going to um, have an effect on your family. Sounds okay. good. All right. I guess that's it. That's it. That's all we got. No, no mail. No mail? No mail. To no. Mm-hmm. We're you still guys, waiting on you guys. You guys can reach out to us and a give text. us. Yeah. What do you want to know? Yeah, what do you go? Facebook. So I started thinking, I have a plan for the next series. Um, and I'm really excited about that, but, and I know that God will provide, um, but there, if you guys want to, want us to talk about something, mm-hmm. let us know, because we would be yeah, more than happy to talk about, um, things that are pressing on your mind. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll have some guests soon. Oh yeah. Depends on our subject, I guess. <laughs> so. Well, where we're going, we may not want to, people may not want us to <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> so, we wait and see. Yep. <laughs> It'll be fun no matter what it is. So, all right. All until right. next time. See ya. See ya.